Today we're going to demonstrate uh, Landair's policy on coupling and uncoupling. As we are backing in to uncouple, as you can see the driver has his four-way flashers on and he's running his headlights as always. As he's getting out of the truck, the driver is using three points of contact uh, and he is walking back to, uh, first thing he's doing to do is check the ground and the clearance to where he is dropping the trailer and then walking to the back of the trailer and making sure everything is good to the back of the trailer. As he gets ready to crank the landing gear down, uh, he is going to identify, number one, that it is a good foundation. We are dropping an empty trailer here, so it is okay to drop that on asphalt. If we were dropping a loaded trailer, we would want that either on a cement pad or we would want it on uh, lumber. Uh, he's cranking the landing gear using three points of contact. And anytime we're dropping a trailer with land air, we want to crank the landing gear all the way to the ground and then stop. And then take the... Uh, handle out of gear and leave it out of gear to keep it from flipping up. Then after he has done that, he is disconnecting the electrical and the both airlines. And the driver has a fifth wheel puller. As he's pulling the release for the fifth wheel, as you can see, he's not having to reach under there with one arm and try to pull that. He is using the fifth wheel puller. He's pulling it out and releasing the fifth wheel locking mechanism. It's very important that when you do this and you pull, you pull with continuous motion. You never want to reach under there and jerk with your hand. Uh, when you're jerking with your hand, what you're doing is you're separating the joints in your wrist, elbow, and also your shoulder. That's not a good situation. After the driver has released the fifth wheel and he gets back in the truck, now our, our trucks are equipped with dump valves, or let me rephrase that, about 90% of our trucks are equipped with dump valves. So at this point, a driver can dump his valves and pull out from underneath the trailer. Well, when he dumps the valves, what he wants to do is wait for about 30 seconds to make sure the landing gear is going to hold. If he doesn't dump the, dump the valves, then when you pull out, once the fifth wheel has cleared the trailer, then you want to stop for about approximately 30 seconds to make sure the landing gear is held and then pull on out. We are now going to demonstrate coupling. As you can see, our driver is backing up to the trailer. Anytime you're backing, you want to be in, in the reverse and you want to be idling back. It means your foot is off the throttle. For automatic trucks, you want to be in the creep mode. So the driver backs up to within the front of the trailer, gets out, checks to make sure that the fifth wheel jaws are open, and checks to make sure that the right height and that he is centered up with the kingpin. Then the driver is walking to the back of the trailer to, ver to verify that the pins are locked in on the trailer tandems and also that the brakes are set against the drums. Then he's continuing to walk to the back of the trailer and then we'll walk around to the passenger side of the trailer to make sure everything is good to go there and there's no damage to the trailer. After he has done that, then he'll get back into the truck, of course, using three points of contact and back underneath the trailer. Anytime you're backing under a trailer, whether it be loaded or empty, all of the equipment Landair has is specced with air ride suspension. So as you're backing under the trailer, you should see the suspension go down. If you don't, then you want to stop and make sure the trailer is not too high. For those of you who have air dumps, if you want to air dump the trailer, release the air dumps back underneath the trailer and then raise it uh, till the fifth wheel is against the plate of the trailer and then back under, you can do that as well. When you back under it, the kingpin will hit the throat of the fifth wheel. You hear the mechanism go click. Uh, you will then do two tug tests. You'll get out, 
You want to squat down and look and make sure that the fifth wheel arm is in and that there's no daylight between the fifth wheel and the plate. Then you'll always want to use a very powerful LED flashlight to look in the throat of the fifth wheel to make sure that you are locked in. Then our driver is uh, connecting his airlines and his pigtail. And then our driver is going to raise the landing gear using three points of contact. Always a reminder, each and every time we raise landing gear, we raise it all the way to the top. Once we have done that, the driver will put the uh, crank mechanism in neutral and then hang the crank handle. Once you have completed your coupling procedure, then of course we want to complete a complete pre-trip on the tractor and trailer. Landair is currently using two types of fifth wheels. One is a Jost, the other one is a Holland. The fifth wheel we're looking at now is the Jost. This is on the majority of our equipment and it's on all of our new equipment and we will continue to order this one in the near future on our equipment. As you can see, it's a cutaway. So what we're going to demonstrate is to how to properly uh, open the, the jaws of the fifth wheel. You'll hook the kingpin pull on it and you pull up and out. This opens the jaws of the fifth wheel so you can uncouple. As you can see, once it's open, it is now in a ready position to be recoupled back up. You never want to reach in there with your hand and pull it. You always want to use a fifth wheel puller. The reason for that is, is you're putting so much strain on your joints, specifically your shoulder. Again, when you're pulling a fifth wheel or even sliding trailer tandems, you never want to jerk. You always want to use steady pressure Anytime you jerk, you're actually pulling the joints apart on your arm, on your shoulder, on your elbow, and on your wrist. So always just use steady pressure. Now, on our joust, we also, on our newer equipment, 2016s, we do have in cab fifth wheel release. So obviously, you don't have to get out and you don't have to pull it like this one does. It does have a manual pull on it in case the automatic in cab fifth wheel release were to malfunction. So if it did malfunction, you would be able to release it. Once coupled to the trailer and you shine your flashlight into the throat of the fifth wheel, what you're looking for is you can see the wedge. The wedge has to be completely across and your kingpin, your, the, the lip of your kingpin should be below the wedge. Also, you're looking to make sure there is no daylight between the fifth wheel and the plate of the trailer. So to make sure you're completely locked in, that wedge has to be completely across. The only way you can identify that is, is to crawl underneath it, shine a flashlight into the throat of the fifth wheel. This is our Holland fifth wheel that is on some of our 2012 and 2013 trucks. Um, this, we've already got the kingpin pulled, uh, we've already got the arm pulled out, and it is in the ready position. As you can see, we have painted the jaws red, so you can indicate now on our trucks it will not be painted red, so you will have to look for that. Once the kingpin is in, obviously you back under the trailer, kingpin hits the throat of the fifth wheel, mechanism clicks, uh, you do a couple of tug tests, you get out and check. We have painted with the Holland, we have our wedge painted red, and we have our knuckle painted white. So on the Holland fifth wheel, it is a two-phase lock. What you're looking for is you're making sure when you shine your flashlight in the throat of the fifth wheel, you're making sure the wedge is across and you're making sure the knuckle is exposed and locked in. The knuckle is actually what locks the wedge in. So when you're looking in the throat of the fifth wheel, if you do not see this knuckle, you are not coupled, you are not locked in. 
This Holland fifth wheel lubri is lubricated different than any other fifth wheel on the market. It does not use black grease to lubricate it. It uses something, a penetrating oil such as a WD-40. So when you're inspecting the fifth wheel, if you see a lot of grease inside the fifth wheel, that means it's gummed up, it's not supposed to be there. Now you will get some grease simply off of kingpins back in, uh, but if it is gummed up with black grease, it can cause it to malfunction. Uh, we do clean these every, at every PM. But again, once you are using a Holland fifth wheel, if you do identify that it's gummed up with grease, uh, we need to get in touch with our breakdown department so we can get that cleaned.